So my name is Andrew Cousins. Um, I run a production company in central London called Bloomsbury Films. We've been in business about 15 years. And we specialize in three things, documentaries, promo films, and event films. Um, we work in mainly London and around the UK and also abroad increasingly in the US and in Europe. We're, I'm very proud, we're official partners of the BNC show. Um, I did all I possibly could to impress them and, uh, and this is the benefit. Um, what I want to do, just to kick off, is that the premise of this talk is how to extend the influence of your event in 60 seconds. And it's, the fact, it's a reference to the fact that as a filmmaker, I'm usually telling stories about events and I got about 60 seconds. So take the BNC show, I've got to distill everything that happened in the course of an event, whether it's an award or a conference or an exhibition or a product launch, and I've got to now retell it in 60 seconds. And as a filmmaker, I'm employing all the tools of the trade, dialogue, editing, sound bites, music, visuals, sound design, all the things that kind of, you wouldn't deconstruct it, but are, if you like, elevating in the mind of the audience something special about the event. And what I'm going to do very quickly is show you the film that we did for the BNC from February. We're down at the BNC show here in London. The clients that we meet here are absolutely fantastic. We're seeing the same people year on year who we work with and getting events that are right for us. The kind of people we see here are our corporate clients, or our agent client, they're UK based, international based. Brilliant to get our name out there and have face-to-face -face meetings with our clients and really showcase what we can do. We have booked events from being at the BNC and you can't get any better outcome from any show than that. It's a fantastic location and they look after you and they have amazing educational seminars. It's managed exceptionally well and it's definitely by far one of the most rewarding shows that we attend. The BNC event show for corporate event planners is one of the leading event shows. I would definitely recommend coming to the BNC show. So that's 60 seconds and that would give you an idea of the amount of content you can get in 60 seconds. So what I want to do is obviously give you some tips, you know, uh, the pearls of my experience over the years for what I think event professionals you know, might find useful to know. So here are some observations I've got about corporate events. They're ephemeral. They take place over a specific time period. They don't last forever. Uh, and obviously when you host an event, you're relying on memory to uh, you know, drive the legacy, if you like, that, you know, what people remember. But events need a way of extending their memory. Um, events are often competing with other events. You know, pick any subject and they're probably going to be some competing event. So what you need to do as event organisers, obviously, I, I imagine, is to elevate the status of your event, to make it seem like it's the most important event on the planet right now. And that's where um, I think you know, media can help. Um, all events, I think, have something to say. There's a message. You know, it, whatever, whether it's a conference, or it's training, or it's a product launch, or it's hospitality, there's something you're trying to communicate. And um, in 60 seconds, you can support that message, whatever that message is. And I think also, how often have you been to an event and you've kind of forgotten what the heck it was all about? And to kind of extend the message and to reinforce whatever the uh, event was saying. Um, and I think my last quick observation as a filmmaker about events is that I started off my business you know, years ago and the first things we were doing were filming like weddings and parties. And the difference between a private event and a corporate event is a private event, when you're filming it, you're just helping them remember it for posterity. It's just, you know, you're, you're, you're saving their kind of, you know, history, if you like. But in the corporate market, you're selling something. That every reason why someone asks us to film something in a corporate market is we're selling something. And usually, uh, the kind of clients that come to us, they have an award ceremony, let's say, and unless that award ceremony looks really significant and feels important, they're not really going to get people submit next year, let alone sell tickets or get attendance. So the, the media, if you like, that, that um, I think as a filmmaker that event people need, you know, has to kind of extend the memory, elevate its status, communicate the message, and sell tickets or sell, you know, sell the event. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly show you a film that we made um, 
in October of last year for a brand new conference, never had run before, never existed before. It was, uh, it's in the wedding industry, it's uh, called Bride Lux, it's a symposium that took place. And uh, we came on board to produce this film. And I think that what I want you to take away from it is that we are, if you bear in mind what I just said, we're trying to get them to elevate the event so it seems a really important conference. We're trying to sell it to the, so they have attendees next year. We're trying to communicate what it's about. Um, and really, you know, um, um, uh, you know, as I say, elevate the event. Welcome to the opening reception of the inaugural Bride Lux Symposium. It's wonderful to see so many friends, acquaintances and colleagues all in the same place. About 150 people attending over the coming days from over a dozen different countries. Everybody here has one thing in common. You all deal with brides and grooms as clients. How to get great new clients. How to find the kind of clients that allow you to be creative and who perhaps most importantly of all, pay the bill. share with you how to elevate the client that you have right in front of you. You want to stop customers from canceling. Don't stop them when they say they want to cancel. Stop them from ever wanting to cancel. People will forget what you say. People will forget what you do. But no one will ever forget how you make them feel. Think of who you are in the industry and how do you offer your talents like no one else does. What's your superpower? The minute you sit in the event's comfort zone, your USP disappears. Don't sell the stuff. Sell that wow. Sell that jaw on the ground when they walk in. Why do we do it? Because we love it. We want to do these things for the client. If they're happy, we're happy. All you need to have is nerve and determination, and that is how you can succeed. Two magic words, what if? This is the perfect place to meet some wonderful people and learn something new. The quality of speakers is superb. Some talks are actually going to change your life. It was just so heartwarming and it was lovely to not only learn but have fun, make friends, new connections, so I would definitely recommend it. The most professional wedding atelier in this country. It's a great place to meet other like-minded individuals and get great advice from the best people in our industry. We've all been fantastic. Let's look forward to 2019. So that was a three-day event and what you'll notice is we're obviously packing it with visuals. We're giving you kind of like cinematic music. We're taking sound bites that are really on point. Um, we are bringing in some testimonials. Um, the key people, obviously, if you're not in the industry, you wouldn't know who they are, but you know, the, the key influences and what they've got to say. And constructing it, that's two and a half minutes long. And that's an example of something that you would put on your website. The difference between the film you saw first and the film you've just seen is the first film is designed to solicit interest from people who are not necessarily even looking for it. And the second film is designed to solicit to further interest from people that would have already perhaps considered that particular event and are now on the website. And this is your opportunity to kind of engage them and tell them a little bit more about the event. So um, I hope that just for a second there, you get an idea of how the tools, if you like, that, uh, that a filmmaker can use. Uh, as I said, the music, the dialogue, the visuals, the sound design. You know, even little things where you kind of underscore, uh, 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 like when we reveal Banqueting House, and, you, and it comes in and I'll rise on the music and bang, you get this big wide shot and it kind of like knocks you over and you think, oh, that's impressive. And it comes just after the sound bite, what if? And it's, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into creating something that is a very short time span that you have in people's, uh, you know, win window of, of interest. So. I think that 
what I want to sort of share with you is that um, a filmmaker, whoever they are, they are a storyteller. So when you hire a filmmaker, you're hiring a storyteller. And they obviously, you know, there's a big difference between a videographer, because we straddle that market and I know what that is. A videographer is usually someone who will turn up with a cameraman. They're not, there's not a strategy to it. They're capturing content, they're capturing stuff. And a filmmaker would be, uh, would be thinking the audience, would be thinking, okay, why do you want this film? What do you want to say? Where are you going to show it? What do you want them, what do you want them to do with it? What, what influence do you want it to have? And it's, it's a lot more kind of constructed so that there's um, a, a, you know, a, a, a thorough purpose to it so that when you create a film, if it doesn't do the job, then it's quite obvious it hasn't done the job. Whereas I think that you know, when you're just capturing content, um, you, you know, like let's say we filmed at Bride Lux, we, sp we filmed all those speakers and we gave like 30 minute long files for them to upload for those that missed it. Um, but I think that when you're you know, uh, filming kind of promotional content, which I think we are all doing increasingly now, um, then you've got to be a bit more crafted about you know, um, how you're going to influence your audience. So um, I think that film has the opportunity to, to tell the definitive story of an event. What are we competing with? We're competing with memory. So you come away from the BNC show and you will remember it. And you'll remember parts of it and you'll completely forget other parts of it. Um, and what film does in general is it, it has the power to tell the definitive version of events. So back in the day, well, we still do it like wedding films. I know that when we created a wedding film, we are telling the definitive story of that wedding day. There will be obviously people's memories, but the film we make is a film that, if you like, all, I wouldn't say this, but it's almost like it records over what you know and now tells you a new version of events. So, for example, when the CEO of Bride Lux saw that film for the first time in his office, he, his reaction to me was, you know, well, expletive, was that really our event? It's because he couldn't believe that the event looked that impressive, the retelling of the story, because from the first-hand experience, real life is messy, right? Real life is uncoordinated. Real life doesn't flow nice and uh, smoothly, whereas the story makes everything seem utterly perfect. So um, I think that, you know, that, that uh, film is a very powerful medium in terms of storytelling, and I think that it can be leveraged in the events market to influence so come back to 60 seconds. Um, I think in 60 seconds you can say far more than a blog article of 500 words, 1,000 words. You can say much more influential things. And the kind of irony is that when you deconstruct and you listen to what people are saying, they're not saying anything amazing, amazing, or truly insightful, but they're saying things that they feel. And I think that we as audience, we are more likely to engage with someone who says something with feeling than almost what they're actually saying. Because what they're saying is not so important. It's really how uh, they come across. So I think that film can be more effective than a blog article. I think that another thing um, I should just mention is that for every one person who's at the BNC show today, 10 people in the industry, in the events industry, won't be at the BNC show. And I think that would be true of many events. That you have your audience, but then you have your non-audience. So how on earth can you make the, all the time, trouble, and effort of the event have a lasting impact beyond the people that attended? And I think, again, that's where film storytelling, let's say in 60 seconds, can extend the influence of your event much further beyond to a wider audience. And I don't mind saying that um, for a lot of my clients, I'm helping them create envy that their event was so damn good, I, I'm so annoyed that I missed it. You know, Bride Lux never had run before. It had no precedent. But obviously, I'm helping the, uh, the organizers, um, you know, create desire in that event, to want to attend it, to be part of it. I'm going to show you one quick 60-minute film. Sorry, 60-second film, big fun. Um, I, this is, I wouldn't say it's a special film, but I think the cause is special. Um, a, a, a small consultant came to me. She's a venue consultant. She works helping venues market themselves. And she was running an event at Cyan House. This was in May um, uh, for a few kind of venues. So the venues were the attendees. And she was giving them a, a, a day-long program that helped them market themselves, helped them understand what they can do. 
And we created a 60 second film for her. And the reason why we're doing this, remembering, I've just said, we're reminding people what happened, we're showing them that it was an important event, and we're helping her sell that event for next time. And see what you make of this. I am really excited because today we are hosting our very first Wedding Spaces Going Places live event here at Scion House in London. Today is all about wedding venues and helping them to attract, convert and elevate their wedding offering. Such an important event because everyone that comes to these events gets to learn from Kelly and the experts that she brings in learning how to manage their social media, to working with influencers and doing their own PR. I think it's been really interesting talking to a diverse range of venues and to discover what they're doing. Just having honest conversations with like-minded people who care about being better. I'd highly recommend it. I think it's great to bond and meet new people. If you're thinking about attending this event, my advice is just do it. It's going to make a massive difference to your business. If she didn't have that 60 second film after the event, what's she going to do to market that event? She could write a blog article, she could have got some photographs, that's great. But I think that where 60 seconds of film storytelling comes in is it can really you know, uh, uh, power the, um, the event to a higher plane and to um, attract a much wider audience um, and to um, really cement what an event might be about. So I just want to say something about platforms and audiences. Um, you mentioned, I mentioned just briefly about where a film is going to be shown. Um, if you wind the clock back uh, five years, 10 years, most people would upload any film they do on YouTube. I don't think that many people use YouTube these days. I honestly don't. Um, I think that you would use YouTube if you were going to maybe embed something on your website. But I think that the main platform, the most happening platform right now is Instagram. That's my opinion. Um, because um, one of the biggest things is when you scroll Instagram, the big difference is that you don't press play. It plays itself. If you want someone to watch your film and you put it on your website, they have to subscribe by being bothered to go to it and then pressing play. Although that sounds simple, very often people don't. Whereas if you start scrolling and you've got a 15 second film or a 60 second film playing, the fact it's already playing, and I know as a filmmaker, if I don't get you in the first five seconds, I've lost you. So you've got to like, you know, purpose it so that you hook people and you know, pull them through the screen and like, attract their attention within like the first five seconds. And I'd say that that platform is very important. Um, so often clients, you know, I get this all the time, you know, can you make a five minute film? Can you make a 10 minute film? I'm like, okay, you've got to think, why do you want a 10 minute film and who's going to watch it? I do really think between one and two and a half minutes is very important. Um, the other thing I would say is that obviously Instagram has IGTV. IGTV lets you play a longer film but it's in a completely different format. You know, this drives filmmakers nuts because we shoot everything in landscape and then all of a sudden IGTV wants to be this way around and um, either you've got to like shoot it twice or you've got to like chop off like 75% of the picture. But it is something to bear in mind because, but I, my experience of IGTV and I've got maybe 12 videos on IGTV is the audience engagement isn't quite as good as the main feed. And um, what is probably better is stories. So stories, you have a maximum of 15 seconds. So I've been saying to you all, you know, you could make a film in uh, uh, 60 seconds. We're increasingly making stuff in 15 seconds because that's what we've got. But you can do a lot in 15 seconds. And I, you know, would encourage you to think about that. All right, I'm being asked to hurry up. Have I got how much longer? Five minutes including Q&A. Okay, all right. So some tips. Um, authenticity, I think, is really important. Whatever film you create, get someone else to create, create yourself, it's got to be authentic. I really think these days, unless something is, um, stories has driven this. Stories is about, you know, like authentic behind the scenes moments. How I can tell you on Bloomsbury Films account, we get far more engagement on stories than we get actually on the actual posts. And because somehow posts seem curated, whereas stories feels like, oh no, this is in the moment, this is real. So, and the reason for that, I think the takeaway from that is authenticity. When you create an event film, it has to feel, or event material, it has to feel authentic. So that's why I think documentary aspect is cool. Um, and I think that people like to see behind the scenes. People like to see what goes on actually behind the scenes. I think that's quite fascinating for us all now. Um, so my last film, and it's one minute, um, is I want to show you 
Um, we made this ourselves uh, during a promo shoot in New York in January. And this is not special, but I just want to show you how I think um, behind the scenes authenticity can be a little bit embarrassing if you're in it, but on the other hand, people like, you know, we're kind to each other, we watch things, we think, oh, that's interesting, you know, that's something I wouldn't expect to see. So um, I'm just going to show you this one minute film. Hi, my name is Andrew from Bloomsbury Films. I'd like to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes taster on what we've been doing over the last couple of days. As you look down the avenue here with the Chrysler building in the background. Just getting the side shots and yellow cab passing the junction across Lexington Avenue and 48th Street. The scale of New York is so much bigger than London, isn't it? Half the time my head's just kind of tilted up. Because <laughs> the best, the beauty is in the sky, really. That's what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> I'm on F16. Yeah. I'm on sh slow shut speed of about four, just so I can get the streaks of the cars. Mm. And I, the reason why I think that content is important is that, you know, I find it's awful I'd like to look at yourself, but I do think that, in a way, when you are putting, when you're communicating with your audience, people feel that there's an ever, there's a higher level of authenticity when they see behind the scenes than when they see what might just look polished. So when you come back to that first film I showed you, the BNC, I thought it was very important to get people's content into it. Otherwise, it would look like just a really fancy polished film. But unless you actually have people in the film talking, then we as an audience wouldn't necessarily feel like that's true. All right, I'm just going to wrap it up there. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. <laughs>